Hello. Hello, Jesse Roper. John, I'm so sorry, man. No, I called I, you like I, half an hour late, man. I called you well beyond when I told you. I'm so sorry. Oh, well, I don't. That's okay. I was out on a walk. I totally got sidetracked and forgot. So, well, I, uh, yeah, it was my bad. No, gosh, that's okay. That that's kind of where we're all at right now. Is like, what day is it? What time is it? And what am I doing? Oh. Like, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I'm out of the loop of everything I usually do. Well, and I'm getting into the loop of being at home all the time with my girl. So, yeah. Anyway, how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I just had uh, Jason Parsons of the Human Kebab of Ubiquitous Synergy CQUSS on with me. And uh, oh, cool. when, when we catch up, it gets pretty out there. That's why we were a bit long. And yeah, the, that's all good. In the last 10 minutes, whilst I was trying to call you, I w- was inspired by you. You're a very inspiring man. And Oh, how so? How so? I'll just throw this through your ear holes. Yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. Sounds like someone I want a freestyle rap over. If you want to open up with a freestyle, tell us about your walk. Yeah. Come on, I gotta go out on a walk. Stretch my legs. Kiss my girlfriend. She's gotta go to bed. Oh no, the moon is shining. It's really bright. I can barely walk because my pants are too tight. My socks are sweaty. My boots are too. I need to get home to talk to Johnny. Oh no! Blap, 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 blap. <laughs> I've just broken my silly light thing. I was shaking at the same time there. Yes, we're off and running. We are off and running with Jesse Roper. Welcome yeah. to my loop pedal. <laughs> <laughs> That's your loop pedal. Okay, cool, man. You've got your loop pedal. I've got mine. Yours goes on the floor and you touch it with your feet. And mine is built for hands and for people that are a bit more skilled at beatboxing than me. But it's a, it's a fun thing to try out. No doubt, eh? I have one. I don't use it often enough. I've got a couple of loops on it, but I'm not very good at the- Oh. To make it go around or to stop, I'm not. I can't remember. But a double tap, I'm terrible at. I always end up off beat. I'm a one tap kind of guy. That's something that I've definitely got to master. And I've only ever used this Boss RC505 loop station for for Joe that just asked. I've only ever used this when I'm doing the show. I've only had this for a few weeks. And that's the thing. Oh, that's, yeah? that's the thing that you've got to really master is that tempo. So okay, adhering to. I'm at 130 right now, and then not if you go a little bit beyond or behind it, it just it screws up the entire thing because it's a looper, so it relies on you being in time. And if you're not, then you are in to a different realm of looping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to be perfect. Something I am not. I tell you though, I saw a Tash Saltana one time. Yeah, and uh, she had to restart once, but the whole show was flawless. It was amazing. But there was one I wasn't even sure. It just felt slightly. A skew, and I think she was the only one that knew it. And she just was like, "Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up!" Now you guys know this is live. I'm starting this one again. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all like, "Yeah!" Oh my god, it was killer. Yeah, she's a great talent. Let's say she's hello amazing. to some. I'm just going to say hello to some people that are spreading some love to you. Tim says he remembers a small wedding he catered three or four years ago near Jordan River. You were playing the music there. It was awesome. Uh, oh yeah. Malcolm says it's April the 37th and who cares? Lol. Yeah, indeed, man. <laughs> can we can we call it that tomorrow after my birth? No, it doesn't matter. Uh, Lindsay says yes. Uh, Nick says out on a walkabout. Lol. Zia says perfect timing. Uh, Aaron's commenting on all the pictures I've got up of you that you can check out after the stream. I've basically photoshopped about seven pictures of you. What I have on the screen, Jesse Roper, is you on the right-hand side doing an adorable point. I think from the Royal Theatre this was taken a few years ago. Uh, and oh, you're, yeah. you're pointing through me because my webcam, I'm in the middle. Then to the left of me, to the right of those on the screen viewing is you leaning back at the rubber boot club, getting into sort of uh, backwards. Uh, I guess you would call that like a backwards lunge. And then underneath yeah. underneath you, underneath your legs is a mini roper doing a Ford squat, rock the shores uh, tilt, uh, late town shakedown tilt on the side stage there. And then. Nice. I have six of you, I think. Yeah, I have you holding the zone sign, because that's a classic. I have you making a, a wonderful guitar face from a boot club as well. Yeah, it's a real it's a real montage of Roper right now that's all over the screen in my face, technically, as I describe this to you. I'll just remove Roper number three. There we are. I used to have a fan that sent me montage or collages of myself. It was uh, it's kind of different. 
Okay, choose well, your next choose yeah. your next words carefully. Where do you want to take this? <laughs> what kind of montage was being made here? <laughs> well, she, I don't know, man. She messaged me all the time, and then she started sending me pictures of myself, like in collages and and all this kind of different stuff. I, I'll be I've got to be honest; it kind of creeped me out. Oh no God! God! Yeah. No, God, anyway. please no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hope has confirmed. Hope has confirmed that I th- I don't know what I said, but squat. Yeah, it looks like you're doing a squat in between. Yeah, it's, it's like actually you're right. Hope, the bigger picture I've got of you, where I said you're doing a backwards lunge. Technically, it's yeah. a, it looks like you're pooping out a mini roper. <laughs> I like well, that, it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can confirm that's happening all the time. And the graphic says, "What's uh, Jesse Roper of What's in My Garden, man?" The latest episode, man, my goodness, it's fresh out the box on social media today. Tell us about the garden. Oh, the garden, well, I don't know, man. It's all hopes and prayers on that right now. I mean, I try not to go to the grocery store, so I planted a real early one. And everything is just starting to poke its head up, but the robins are in there. We talked about the robins last time I was on the zone with you. (laughs) Same thing, except this time there was that one that hurt itself and I let it go. But now I've got like a really weak slingshot that was given to me by the girls at Fox Club actually years ago. And I never really used it because it was so weak. It was like, this thing's kind of useless. I can't hit nothing. But then the robins have been in there so much. I'm like, well, maybe if I just whiz a few like small pebbles softly at them, they'll get the hint that they're not really welcome. But I think they take it kind of as a game. But it's all right by me. <laughs> they go in outside with my really weak slingshot and some dried peas and pebbles at them. Thank you, Mother. But yeah, I don't know, kind of hold my hopes and depend on it right now. Because uh, it's also a goal of mine to just grow the most beautiful garden. Anyways, so lo- lo- it always is. Up. Losing you, <laughs> losing you a little bit there. It's been a goal of yours to create the most beautiful garden. What did you, we just lost you for a second. In all of the world. In all of the <laughs> world? <laughs> no, I'll just In go all with Joey today. In all of the world? Yeah. John, I like these upgraded sound effects you got going on. I got some things here, man. I was waiting for a break in conversation to turn into the, the Robin. It's like, this guy is crazy, man. He's got a slingshot <laughs> now. This guy is bringing a slingshot to our veggie guy. Does it, what? There he goes. Pebble boy. That's what we'll call him. Pebble boy. <laughs> Pebble boy versus the English Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I have flown all the way from Birmingham. Get out of my garden. This is ridiculous. Get in, Roper. Anyway, so welcome to the show, Jesse Roper. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John Williams. Yeah, and I just wanted to check in, you know. That's what this whole thing is, is about, is spreading joy and, and checking in with wonderful people that I've been able to call friends that are also as, as bonkers and outgoing as as you and uh we're friends because we share similar abilities to laugh at the same quirky wonderful things we're both very open you've got your backside off for so many years and i know that you inspire so many people and so if we can spread joy i just really appreciate your time man ernie is saying hello matt's saying fourth favorite salt spring show was john and roy jesse roper and astro color holiday special a few years back yeah that was when i was away that was ah, oh, that would have been amazing uh do you remember that one on salt good. spring What's that? Do you remember that one on the holiday special in Salt Spring a few years ago? Oh, absolutely I do. It was great. I ended up dancing my pants off that night. But uh, I think my favorite Salt Spring show, I'm going to take it a different direction here. I was op- It was my first Salt Spring show, and I opened for Bill Johnson at the, uh, what's the theater there? The Art Springs Theater? I've actually and, never uh, been to Salt Spring. I So sorry to say. Me? Never in my 10 John. years here. Okay, the first thing you gotta do when you get to Salt Spring, I'm trying to remember the name of this coffee shop. There's a, there's like a, okay, it gets the worst reviews on Google and Yelp and whatnot, but it's like right off the ferry, you drive up and left, and then instead of going to Ganges, uh, you sort of stay in that little town area, and there's this little no name coffee shop with this lady, and uh, <laughs> she's the rudest person uh, on Salt Spring, I'm sure but makes amazing coffee. Right. And uh, anyway, I go there every time just because I get, she's such a, like, she's such a piece of work. She's a total show. It's a TV. You go in there and she treats you disdainfully, asks you what your coffee is, won't let you put your own cream in there. It's hilarious. But anyway, she's my favorite. And then, uh, but anyways, I was playing Salt Spring with Bill Johnson 
and it was my first show there. And uh, I was up in the crowd with my, my mom and dad and girlfriend. And I already felt like a pretty cool guy playing at the theater. And then Bill Johnson, he was wireless that night. And he walked up to the crowd and gave me his guitar three quarters of the way through his set. And uh, so there I was up in the crowd soloing with his band. It was pretty cool. Uh, so I walked down onto the stage and did the whole thing and then walked back and gave it back to him. It was a fine evening on Salt Springs for this guy. That is, that's awesome. I love that when those things happen. Yeah, because so really- many so many artists and this is what you've been really good at over the years as well like i mean when you've for you the community when i first moved here i remember seeing you in in bastion square and all over the place uh, centennial yeah. square all over the place 10 10 11 years ago and you've grown up with the and you've seen the likes of the malcolm owen floods and the marcus man has and all these amazing people that have grown up as well in this scene and that's what i find interesting is that it's still and even with the radio thing right now, it's just part of entertainment. Okay, let's just, if I'm going to throw a statement across it, let's just say part of the entertainment industry is yeah. that, okay, I see you, I respect what you're doing, but there's no way I'm letting you do anything when I'm doing my thing. And I love it when someone says, do you know what? I can feel the energy that this the crowd feels for this guy. This is his hometown. This is where he's from. He's just kind of a little ferry across from his hometown to this place. That He's part of this part of the world. Here, you take the guitar for 10 minutes. I love when yeah. performers do that because then it shows that they are comfortable in, they know what they're bringing and they know what they've got. And let's just spread the joy. I, I can't yeah. stand when it's, when it's not, when it's so insular, I can't stand it. Yeah, no, and there's no piece in gar- or no point in guarding your little piece of pie because, uh, it just makes everybody not like you. And, uh, there's always going to be some different flavor that other people like as well. Like, <laughs> I remember, feeling jealousy for so many other acts at like the success that they had and whatnot in different areas and different people like different things. And you kind of just want them to like you. It's kind of a silly, irrational thing to think. And then I got over that. And, uh, I don't know, man, like part of the best part is creating that magic where you, you give the, the, yeah, yeah. You put the Malcolm Owen flood on the stage with a guitar and let them have a guitar. So when everybody lights up because of that, and then you get on stage to a, like a, just a more frenzied audience and more of a pal thing with your buddy, Malcolm Owen flood. And, uh, and then it just brings everything a little bit higher. And that's what oh, we're all trying to do is get that rush and feel that thing and joy and energy from being up on stage. Yeah. I like sharing it, man. It's cool. Especially if you get somebody who reciprocates and doesn't say, thanks, peace. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. to have you up on their stage too. Yeah, because then sadly it's the yeah. last time that you call that person back out. Like when yeah, absolutely. That reminds me of when Slash was playing uh, with Michael Jackson at an awards show. Oh my God, what mm-hmm. award show was it? I don't know if you saw that when Slash and Michael Jackson did whatever song it was and Slash did a four and a half minute long guitar solo and would not stop playing. And Jackson was dancing around for the first two minutes, thought it was just like the Guns N' Roses rock and roll thing, but he'll give it back to me. And Slash yeah. never stopped. He was physically removed from the stage. <laughs> Michael was <laughs> Michael was dancing around him and furious. And he left a few minutes before and was like, whose show is this? And that's why you know, don't, don't. And Slash never got invited to work with uh, Michael Jackson again. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm, slash, I'm slashing through a story that I'm vaguely recall and I'm now didn't mean to say slashing so much but you said it there hit the nail on the head which is the more positive power you put around yourself the more it energizes you as a group and a collective and creates a better moment moving forward so yeah why wouldn't you surround yourself with people that can elevate you and if you feel like something it's a good motivator too because you feel like somebody comes up there and steals the stage well it just means you got to get better doesn't it yeah (laughs) and do a better job when you're up there yourself you can't be unhappy that somebody did a great job yeah and just to cover my backside because i don't want to seem like i'm sat here like i'm the best flipping dj in the world but i mean and and, and i'll get to well, my you're qu- pretty good john i like you well thanks man but i mean my question i suppose i'll share my question and then i'm going to share a bit about me for, for 40 seconds to a minute maybe a minute 20 is you you must <laughs> okay. you must still have those moments of ah and here's my point is that as much as I can say, look, be as positive as you can and, and look to learn and grow from other people, I didn't used to do that at all. It's all part of evolution and maturing and, and growing up. But where yeah. I am now is the most happiest and groundest I've ever been in my life. There's still those challenges where just a couple of days ago, I was annoyed um, that a radio DJ that I respect on the other side of the country, um, who absolutely has no idea that I even exist. Now, that's important. He, he has no idea I'm a human being. He, like he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't know who I am. 
but he is a very good DJ and someone that I've been following and I've been wondering about featuring out, uh, reaching out to. He's just mm -hmm. started a show very similar to this. My goodness, there's lots of us doing this right now. He's also just started yeah. a, a new music show that's its name is very similar to what was that. And the other day I found myself going like, well, is he copying me? And I got into that moment of arrogance and egotistical thought, which was, well, why isn't anyone maybe, well, if people are noticing my stuff, why aren't they noticing my, but then, and it was just such a waste of energy for an hour and a half doing that until I could, yeah. and it's so hard right now because usually I've got my support beams that I call up or I'm at work and I'll turn to Jenny West, who's an incredible friend and say, blah, blah, blah. And she'll go, eh, it seems a bit much. I'll be like, thanks for letting me get rid of that. Now I can actually maturely move forward from it and not think that stupid immature thing that I just said to you and I won't say it to yeah. anyone else. And I don't have those sounding boards right now. And so my question is like looking at your evolution over the last 11 years that I've been aware of you and for the 10 years that I've lived here, you have gone from being this rambunctious, okay, here's my thing. I'm going hundred miles an hour, hell for leather, but, but anxious at times performer to now channeling that anxiety in the right way. And you must still have moments where you have a lapse in believing in yourself and you must still then have a system that can lift you out of it. And what is that? Yeah, no, it's the same challenge as it always was. I just, yeah, but, uh, I think a better preparation these days. I kind of used to just, uh, everything was spur of the moment and off the cuff, which works out brilliantly sometimes. And I got to be careful now that I don't limit myself to being so prepared that I don't have any like off the cuff moments. But uh, yeah, I think it's more, uh, I can't stand practicing. I like uh, creating new things all the time. And the best thing I can do for myself these days pre-show is uh know that i'm gonna be good and you can only do that by like you know practicing up your stuff and feeling like you don't have to think about it so hard when you're up there if you get nervous because when you get nervous and you got hundreds or thousands of people looking at you it's really uncomfortable so i don't know i just try to prepare myself better i try to be a little more forgiving to myself if i do screw up uh I don't know. Honestly, I've been doing yoga lots and uh, learning how to breathe better has honestly changed my life. And uh, there's sometimes I'll like turn away from the crowd and like stop myself, take like four deep breaths and then get back on the mic. Cause yeah, I get terrified up there just the same as I always used to. I expect, you know what, almost more in some ways, because when I was a young guy, I was kind of cocky and I was like, yeah, I can play the guitar and I'm pretty good. And, <laughs> and so I'd get up on stage and be like, these people never seen anything like this. I'm going to rip. And then I would rip. And then, you know, like I would get whatever response I got, but I still thought I was pretty good. And then I started getting a little bit more dialed in on what is good and who's making it. And I started being like, well, why am I not? And I'd paying a little more attention to my live videos and like, what does that look like? And like, it was a stark contrast between myself and the people who are actually doing good. Then I kind of started beating myself up all the time. And uh, I've had to learn how to not do that. I don't know. It's all preparation, really. You know, going and practicing with the hockey puck before you go out and play games and decide that you suck because you can't turn because you've never practiced it. You know, that kind of thing. And then uh, just lots of support around me helps. You know, I got a great family, lovely girlfriend who she really keeps me in check. She's a great sounding board. Yeah. And uh, I just try to use those things as much as I can. I love your parents, man. I've They're awesome. <laughs> I remember back before you were a band of the month and before Yukon Girl was even recorded, I remember your, your dad would call me up and the first 20 times he called me, no, was it, which way around was it? It was either your dad or your mum. Pardon me. <laughs> it was then, my dad. I think, yeah, I think it was sure. your dad. The, the first handful of times he would never say who he was. I knew it was John, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he'd never say any connection. And then when the U, then when you were band of the month and Yukon Girl, he was like, yeah, this is John. Remember John? I'm like, yes, John. He's like, I'm his dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for like for like two years of all these conversations, speaking with this guy John about his talented son, and never saying who it was, all the never. And then when Band of the Month does that one day, that little two second, I'm his dad. <laughs> it's just so so adorable. I'll never forget it. I've got it saved somewhere on a hard drive at the other end of the room here. I'll, no way. Yeah, I have to try and dig it. Oh, out. send it to me. One of these, if you ever you know have the time and you're digging through, you find it. Send it to me. Yeah. I got a story about that, though. 
Um, there's been a couple times and only a couple times when I like, usually I don't even listen to the radio. I can't stand listening to myself. And, and, uh, and I just like, I find I got so much music and I'm always looking for ideas and the radio is just a distraction. So I drive with no radio, but the, I've phoned in and asked for myself a couple times and been like, yeah, who's it going on for? I'm like, uh, Jeff. Yeah. It's going on for Jeff. <laughs> Actually, Ryan Arm busted me one time. He's like, this is Jesse this is Jesse Roper, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got me. But anyway, so this one time I'm driving home in rush hour and, uh, it's the queue and it's the picture, the, uh, all request at six or whatever. And, uh, and I'm sitting there waiting for traffic to move. And I hear, Oh, all requests on the queue. Uh, who we got? And he's like, Oh uh, yeah. Good. It's, it's real like grungy voice. Can I can I hear the new Jesse Roper song? And it was Ryan that day too. And he's like, Oh yeah, sure. Which one you want? He's like, Apparition. And and he's like, Oh yeah. Who's this going out for? And there was a pause. And then uh, uh, Jeff. And in my mind, I'm like, Right on. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. <laughs> and uh, I listen to my, you know, drive myself to the next light, listening to my tune. That was very cool. Well, two two days later. Dad phones me up. He's like, Jesse, uh, I'm I'm scraping that moss off the driveway, and I need you to give me a hand. I'm like, all right, I'll come on over. So he's like, he's one of these guys that likes everything real clean, clean, and you know, putting away in its place. Good that man. Nature does its thing. Yeah, that must, be, that must be a John thing. That must be a John it, thing. Clean freaks. It's not a Jesse thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if nature is growing on the driveway, he's getting it the hell off there. So we had like these scraping tools, and we were scraping the moss off the driveway, and I could tell there was something on his mind. He was kind of like making these frustrated sounds, and his brow was all furrowed and whatnot. And he's, I'm like, "What's up, Dad?" And he's like. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I brought you guys up to be good young men and tell the truth and good to other people. And there's just certain values I tried to instill. And uh, I just, I, I did something the other day. I'm not proud of myself. I'm like, what could you have possibly done? You're not proud of yourself. You, you know, like, you're a cool old guy. What do you got to worry about? He's like, no, nah, I did. I did something. I'm not proud of it. I'm like, well, what'd you do? He's like, ah, I, I, well, I phoned the queue. And I started to dawn on me, holy shit, dad was Jeff. And sure enough, he's like, I phoned, I phoned the queue and it was the request hour. And I, I would never do this. I would think, you know, I try to tell the truth, but he asked, like, you know, I asked for an apparition. And he said, they're going to play it. And, and he, said, he said, who we got? And I said, and I, and I cut him off. I'm like, you said Jeff. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, I said, Jeff, like, I was listening to you, dad. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> Oh, that is so adorable. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh, I bet hopefully hopefully Ryan's got those. That would be so imagine that. Imagine on the next record if one of your songs opened up or finished like with uh yeah, I'd like to get this one. Um yeah, it's Jeff. Um Yeah. <laughs> I, I, now now I'm gonna to speak to Ryan tomorrow and we'll see if we can dig that up in the next few weeks. See if I can get mine and he can get his so you can get yours. Way <laughs> switch. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, well, I got a new album coming out that maybe when COVID's done, I'm not really sure. So, have you heard it yet? Sorry, you were breaking up a bit there. You've got a new album it, coming out, but you well, don't know when. Yeah, we're, we're kind of sitting on it right now. But then I thought, uh, I sent it to Brian to have a listen to. And I make everybody who listens to it swear upon penalty of death not to share it. But did he share it with you? No, because you said you'd kill him for goodness sake. <laughs> do you know what that is for any if anyone watches this that has received a death threat from you they now they well they now know it's completely worthless because it's not going to happen <laughs> no i totally would follow through man you'd end up a chunk of my garden fertilizing my plants well you know what they say about <laughs> english people they bring the lime anyway that's true anyway <laughs> that's just that's a throwback that um so with that, yes. Now I'm just picturing you with a small pebble shooter threatening people. <laughs> For those that have joined us recently, the likes of Chris and Malcolm on Flood here himself has now joined us because he was tagged. Lindsay, Shannon, hello as well to Amber, who says this is gold. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Aaron. All right. On. So for those of you that have joined recently, Jesse Roper has an issue with some robins in his garden. He's not trying to kill the robins. He's trying to scare them by firing with a slingshot via foxglove. He's trying to scare them with the odd pebble flyby. And that, Brian Boitano, if you're watching, will be you. 
tomorrow if you dare share what we now know you have because jesse's told us live from my bachelor pad to the 32 people watching in this moment <laughs> <laughs> awesome hi 32 people yeah i was on uh jason uh the uh, verners one Tom, he was with me on wednesday yeah. he's so good tell me about your experience with jason verners Oh, I like that guy. I've always liked him. He's a sweet kid. But uh, yeah, he did some magic. Or he made me do some magic and then basically guessed what I did. I don't know how that works. Okay. He did the magic. Right. He just told me what to do on the other end of the camera. Yeah, he did but a similar was, thing with us. What one did he do with you? Uh, there was nine cards, and uh, I had to pick one out. and I had to shuffle it like three times, basically. And he told me to take two off the top. They were not the cards. Two off the bottom. They were not cards. Two off the top. One off the top or something like that. And then the remaining card was my card. Yes. And uh, yeah, we did. Me. We did. And we didn't do that one, but it was very, very similar. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very. Well, I imagine doing it uh, live like this is kind of limiting in the amount of tricks you can pull off. I mean, you can't David Blaine go throw a card at a window and have it stick to the other side of the window <laughs> on Facebook yeah. Live so much. You know. Yeah. You or know. maybe you could. I don't know. You mean like, Trust my webcam. Hmm. Trust. That's the thing. Is it, a, is it a flying emoji coming into the card that he's changing it or what? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what have you been doing with your... Sorry? Is, what have you been doing with yourself all the, you know, are you taking up any new hobbies or anything? Yeah, it's called Life for My Bachelor Pad. I, um, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> no, literally, I just, I have, I'm just turning my audio down a bit there. I'm a bit too loud. I... I've always kind of wanted to do this sort of thing. And I, if, I had a more, if I had a more powerful laptop, I would obviously have asked you to do like a video call so we could see each other and we could get your reactions. And like, but I haven't got that kind of budget or that kind of IPU, CU, CF power, whatever they call the tech. The, I'm not an expert hey, at it. Um, I, tried to do the, I, I tried to do the live Facebook feed thing the other day and I swore at my camera for like 25 minutes before I could get it to actually go. It was one of the most stressful things I've done in the past year. I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> well, you were great on it. I watched I watched 20 minutes of it. Oh, good. I'm glad it came up. I was like, I, the whole time I was, uh, I was wound tight because I couldn't get the camera to go. It would, it, it, it ended up being the USB port was wiggly or something. I don't know, but the camera would be like on and then I'd press go and they would go three, two, one, and then boom, the camera would go black. Right. And uh, so I did that for like 20 minutes and I troubled, I already had troubleshot it before the day before the morning of, and two hours before just to make sure I had it all right. And then the second I tried to do it, it didn't work. And I said every curse word in the book, like the most horrible ones. And then what I didn't realize was Facebook, Facebook live has this sweet, sweet thing where you press end session and it keeps going for like 15 seconds so I know for a fact people heard me say some terrible shit <laughs> on <laughs> Facebook Live. <laughs> oh, and now gosh. I'm sure some people have some different opinions of me. Uh, no, they, 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 their opinions would be, oh, I guess he's also a human and technology can be very frustrating sometimes. And that's <laughs> I guess so. like with the show that I did a couple of nights ago, man, like the Jason Verner's Instagram night you did, he's, that poor fellow's show was interrupted because Instagram and Facebook has unprecedented amounts of people up right now. The, yeah, I was right. talking with Jasmine from Mother Mother about this last week on Life from My Batch Pad episode four. Is that I found myself watching someone making falafels in New Brunswick. I have never willingly typed into a search engine. I would like to watch someone making falafel. I don't even know if that's how you say it. Falafel, for waffle, want a waffle? I don't know awful what I was doing, but I was watching Shauna in New Brunswick making falafels. This is a strange time, but I also they like. Look good? I'm not an expert. They looked edible, willing to nibble for sure. But in this, and this goes back to what you were saying, uh, I feel about 15 minutes ago, it, the point that I was going to have about your outlook on, okay, we'll share the stage. For goodness sake, we all empower each other together. What then dawned on me is what I do like about this time we're in right now with isolation and COVID-19 is that, yeah. and, and both you and Jason from uh, USS have said this tonight or along the lines of, we're all powerful. We're all special. We can all uh, build each other up in a different way. There is no all of a sudden here are your Katy Perry's and Taylor Swift's and then we're all just the rubbish at the bottom of it. We're all now praising each other like we're praising our next door neighbor like 
we pay yeah. 500 bucks to go and see Neil Diamond on his last tour. God bless him. Right. Whatever it might be. I didn't do that. I, I didn't have the money, but I didn't do that. I don't I, have I, that money. Yeah. I, it's a beautiful noise going on, on the track. I was raised on that album. Anyway, here's the thing though. Um, I like that we're now clicking into and admiring everyone around us. Now, not everyone is perfect, but people are willing all of a sudden now because they're all watching these live streams and seeing that not all YouTube videos are sliced together in 28 minutes, right? In, from 28 minutes to 28 seconds. I can't stand that unnatural yeah. editing. Now people are like, oh, I heard Jesse end of his stream. And here's my point. My goodness. This is a classic John three minute ram rant to my point. To, 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 to pump you up because I don't think people are going to think any less of you for that end of the last stream if you were swearing because they're going to go, well, it's a pain in the ass doing this stuff and he's expressing that because he's a human. Like, no one's going to, you're not going to stop that stream and go, well, that was a really annoying time and I'm fine now. Like, I mean, you've got to process it a little bit for a few seconds or F-bombs, whatever it might be. Fair. I know my girlfriend tried to tell me that too, but I was like, I, I was kind of mortified. Actually, mostly the thought was, I hope my mom didn't hear that because uh, she would phone me up and be like, Jesse, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, be Jeff, awful. Jeff would be furious. Yeah, Jeff would be really upset. Oh, there was a spider just came in my door. Ooh. I guess my weather stripping isn't very tight. Those machos oh, well. and spiders are wily. Yeah, well, I was sitting in my jam room, and that's when my phone was doing something funny there. So I can't. I'm sitting in my kitchen, staring at the door now. And I guess <laughs> the door doesn't keep the spiders out. <laughs> I'm just checking through the comments here. Good evening to Shelley and Chris, also Kirsten from the radio station, Kirsten James from the Zone Light One Three. She's flipping awesome. Uh, Catherine, welcome. Erin, Megan. So let's go through some of the questions here. Where was it? Jesse, ask Jesse what he's drinking. Says Shelley. I guess in this moment, uh, what are you drinking in this moment? Water. Stinging nettle tea. Stinging nettle tea? What the fudge <laughs> yeah. are you drinking that for? Because it's good for you. And we have it growing all over the property. So I went out today because, you know, you can't really run and get fresh greens from the grocery store as much these days. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, I've been eating some miner's lettuce and some stinging nettle. Thought tonight would be a stinging nettle night. So I've just been, like, blanching the stinging nettle eating it and then uh, drinking the water at the bottom as tea. It's good. And, but my girlfriend was like, ew, why are you just, you're just going to eat it like that? I was like, yeah. She's like, no. And then she chefed it up into this beautiful meal tonight. Well, she basically told me how to do that, but nah. Anyways, now nah, I'm left with the water, slurping it down. Which, what's she drinking? I'm just making notes. You blanch the nettle, you heat it, you drink it, stinging nettle tea. Yeah, bam. Just like anything else, tea. And it's good for you. Vitamin A, B, C, probably D too. All right. I'm not really sure, actually, <laughs> but I read that it's yeah. got vitamins in it. Say it with confidence. We'll all believe you. You are Jesse Roper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's probably got <laughs> vitamin N. You know what? I'll do it in a What's in My Garden episode. So you I'll tell you, you whatever comes to my mind. You said that she made a dinner out of the stinging nettle? What? Yeah, well, she took, uh, like, soy sauce. What's that soy sauce alternative? Uh, shoot, I can't remember the name. It's in my fridge, but I don't want to stand up. But uh, it's like soy sauce. I had some sausages and then a little bit of oil and some uh, garlic. Obviously, I got tons of garlic. Chopped that up. I did blanch this uh, stinging nettle. Put that up. This is all in a fry pan. And then, uh, and then some hemp hearts on top of that. And that was my big bowl of uh, health that I ate up today. Hemp hearts, stinging nettle. Love hemp hearts. Okay, I'm going to make you a song. Is that okay? Yeah, get, please. Okay, all right. So you just hang out. Uh, this is too ridiculous for me not to jump into something here. Malcolm Owen okay. Flood. Uh, Malcolm Owen Flood has joined us. He says, no, SH something something uh, going for going to pick some stinging nettles tomorrow. Michaela. It's good for you. He's Malcolm knows. That. He's a country boy. Braggs is the bomb, says Kirsten. What did I miss about that? Braggs is good. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to get up. I'm going to tell you. Uh, this is different. It's like coconut. It's like fermented coconut uh, soy sauce. And it's, uh, I think it's a little, maybe tamari. It's like a wheat-free thing. Okay. All right. Well, look, um, you make another cup of tea. I've got some Robinson's Apple and Blackcurrant uh, squash that I'm drinking, but I'm just I'm in, uh, uh, inspired by your nettle 
T. Nettle T, Jesse Roper. Nettle. Nettle, Nettle T. Nettle T, Jesse <laughs> Roper. Okay, what are we going to do? 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 Do I want to go like, uh, okay, Jesse Roper. That, I think blues. I think blues. Okay, tap tempo of about two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, no, I don't want to go 180. I want to go about one. Twenty. All right. <clears throat> Maybe I'll start with a little. Uh, <laughs> nettles, nettles. Okay. Thinking of things, multiple angles, brain functioning at a decent speed. Let's start. Okay. Nettles. Was I recording all that nonsense over that? <laughs> yes, I was, but it stays now, Jesse Roper. <laughs> that is what the looper does to you. It grabs you and moves you. This is your calling, John. Um, you think that was crazy? Bring it back now. I don't know what the that was all about. Yeah. I bring this guy down a bit. And I'm going to change it. Gonna change it. Bear with me. Yeah. What is this? Okay. I feel like I've made. What is this? What are you doing? Get away from me. You ain't gonna make me into your tea. What do you mean, blanch and heat it, then drink, repeat it? I'm no singing nettle tea, bitch. Back up, Jesse. I see you with your little pebble duster, Robin Scarer machine. You don't scare me. Yeah. Jesse Roper. Talking about that, blanch it, heat it, drink it, singing nettle tea. Hemp ground. What a wonderful pie. That sounds like it could be really interesting and healthy. Good for you, my chosen wealthy. Oh, living off the land. Living off the land. Because I do love, I do love my stinging nettle tea. Have you got room for me in your belly? You best believe it. Come on down. Okay. I think that will do on that one. Dude. I feel like I just went to another place. Yes, I have been growing illegal mushrooms in your garden. And profiting <laughs> we off gotta of hang out more, man. <laughs> 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 okay, welcome back. <laughs> this is live from my bachelor pad. I'll turn the oh, lights deadly. back to normal. Catherine's laughing. That's very generous, for sure. Kirsten, I don't know what's going on, mate. Erin, I've got no idea. I'm giving you the munchies, apparently. Well, yeah, i tell you what. Good. Tracy's enjoying it. <laughs> I just, I don't understand. I don't know where half of this stuff comes from, man, but um, I appreciate well, your, was really good. your audience of it. That was really creative, John. Sometimes things strike me. I write them in the notebook, and then I uh, come back and, and address it the best I can in a form of some sort of exploration. There we go. Yeah, that was a large amount of weird Weird is something that I do very well. Uh, that reminds me of a friend, Ashley, who's been living in Vancouver for several years now. And she said to me, this is back when I was first dealing with um, my bipolar diagnosis eight, eight, yeah. eight and a half years ago. And I remember speaking yeah. to her. We were on a walk on Dallas uh, Road, James Bay's. We were, we're, sorry, I'm so anally detailed about everything that I paint the picture as I see it. We were by the art place. Who's the... Who's the Elizabeth? Who's the art on Simcoe? 
Elizabeth Carr, uh, Emily Carr. Thank Emily, you. Yeah, Emily Carr. Yeah. Yeah. We were walking by that, and I said, "Oh, I'm just always weird." Blah blah blah. And she's she, we she stopped and she looked at me and she went, "Nothing is weird, really." Ooh, I like her. Yeah, and I was like, "That's a great flipping point because." We self-define what we feel is weird. We have, if we're going through high school, oh, Jesse's weird or John's weird because he does things differently. Okay, so yeah. different. So I've always then thought that weird is kind of a negative word. So oh, I've, absolutely, I, especially when like, you're young. Yeah, then I'm like, okay, well, embrace, now I'm like, embrace the weird, man. Let's get weird. But back then it was mm -hmm. like someone saying, you are a piece of, right? It was a very hurtful oh, yeah. word. Yeah, basically, you are not attractive yeah. in your weirdness. Oh, Kirsten James is I quoting like you. She's quoting you already in the comments. We're about yeah. two minutes away from a meme here. That was a large amount of weird. <laughs> Jesse Roper, April 6, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsten James. Yeah. I think I know her. I think I know her. Yes, because she, she, she works at the radio station. She's taken your picture a thousand times. Rocktography. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> were you doing what you were you doing on your walk what i was doing before this show started all right oh, welcome possibly. welcome yeah <laughs> i've been here for a long time <laughs> <laughs> it's a very bright full moon out there i don't know if you poked your head out tonight but it's awesome i actually need to get it. I, I it's 10 p.m so this show is pretty much close to to the end of it here but it's my birthday night and screw it but um uh, your birthday it, yeah i'm 33 today that's what you're in my birthday special Happy freaking birthday, John. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> right on, buddy. You're 33? Yeah. Damn. I'm a little older than you. What did you think I was? Uh, well, I, I'm going to be honest. I thought you were a little bit older, but only because of your accent. You sound so mature. Thank you. It's nothing to do with my grounded, mature mindset. It's purely <laughs> no, you're my talking vocal about weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, people usually think I'm around 40, but no, but um, oh, yeah, and, and you know that. what's one, what's wonderful about that is that that's proof that I didn't bribe you into being in this episode. I just asked you to be in it and you said, yes, I never said it's my birthday and it's going to be terrible if you don't join me. No, you, I don't like birthday bribers. That's a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> any, that I've actually got crime show music bed. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay. If there's, oh man, I thought I had the deep voice on. Shh. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm breaking character here. Say that line. Okay. Say that line again. If there's what one. Line? If there's one thing Jesse Roper doesn't like, it's. Oh, what did I say again? <laughs> Shit. Not weird people. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm losing my train of thought too. Birthday. It's birthday. Oh shit! What did I say? I lost it. It fell out of my head. Birthday. Come on, come on, comment section. Save him here. Comment section. Save Built him. On birthday guilters. Birthday. Uh, <laughs> man, I, I'm terrible on like any prices right or any of this crap. Jesse Roper do doesn't like. Ask. Birthday braggers? Was that what you said? What did you say? Birthday braggers? You birthday... said birthday bribers. Bribers. Thank That's you, Kirsten right. and Liz. Okay, let, let's pretend Thank that... Thank you, Kirsten. <laughs> let's pretend that none of this has happened in the last three minutes. And say I that like line again for bribers. me. Say that line again okay. for me. My name's Jesse Roper. I don't like birthday bribers. Get your bribing ass out of my flipping vegetable patch you or I will shoot you with my slingshot <laughs> is that birthday bribe enough for you <laughs> you remember the champ coming soon <laughs> <laughs> to a fenced off neighborhood near you Jesse Roper stars in the slingshot that brought Sally the Robin down.
Uh, yes, uh, Jake, um, uh, Rock 101, C Fox, uh, Jake, uh, Bro Jake Show. That's what you're referring to, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was flipping hilarious. That's way back in the day now. He's a sportscaster yeah. these days. Yeah. Oh, really? Actually, I don't, th- I don't think he is doing that anymore. I think he's just doing his own oh. podcast. Yeah. Oh, is he still doing the champ? I honestly have not checked in the last couple of years. That's something to Google oh. now because he's a great broadcaster. I used to look forward to that one. Yeah, he was good. Is that planter tulips around the stump enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> I says, pardon. <laughs> yeah, I was working at Olympic View Restaurant as a dishwasher when that was on the radio. Oh, my gosh. And it was one of the highlights of my day. Yeah. Yeah, Dayton yeah. just said uh, he does a great champ impersonation. Oh, Day- yeah? Dayton, send us your video to be in the next episode. I don't know. That sounds very. Um, just uh, send me a video so I can see and support you. There we go. That's less you got to I want to see too. Yeah. Send it to Jesse. Tag me in it. Put yeah. it on Facebook or something. Yeah, tag him in it. Is that put it on Facebook enough for you, brother? There we go. Well, Jesse, anything else that you'd like to. I'm just so thankful for your time, man. How much have you given me? 45 minutes, I think. Yeah, I, I, that's wonderful. It's been so great to catch up with you. Any closing statements from you? Jeez, I didn't realize it had been that long. That's the beauty of good conversation, man. I've got to make sure I have some flipping dinner at some point. It's 10 p.m. Yeah, no doubt, eh? Well, John, when this is all done, you should come on over for a hangout, I'd say, a bonfire or something. Sounds great. Uh, but, yeah, good luck in the rest of your, in your show. And uh, thanks to all the listeners for tuning in to John's sweet show. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) uh, happy birthday to you, John. Thanks, mate. And uh, go try some nettle, man. It's good for you. I'm going to dive deep into nettles. I'm No, I'm going to try responsibly picked and shared nettles that will not sting me sometimes. Excellent, man. I got to tell you something. You can do it without wearing gloves. Did you know that? What, pick the nettles? Yep. Here's the here's the trick. I love. You firstly, to, I'm I'm going to interrupt that because I I love how adore like you can hear the adorable cheeky <laughs> smile that's formed on your face. <laughs> Please continue now that we're more clear of that. Okay, it's only because I had this conversation earlier with my buddy Tim, and his uncle had told him that you have to grab it really hard, and so I told him, yeah, like I heard that one too. You're supposed to pinch it with your nutsack and pull it off the plant, but neither of those work. What you have to do, actually, because I like you, is uh, you Thanks. have to, like, not don't raise the thing, but if you grab it straight on, like, pinch it between your two fingers. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. I'd, I'd almost have to demonstrate this. Your but phone, don't, great. I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm not lying here. Your phone did cut out, and it still sounds like innuendos. Can you back up a paragraph and run us through that again? Oh, shoot. Well, don't graze the plant. Like, don't... Uh, don't like uh, brush your hand against it. You have to go like firm contact, <laughs> pinch the leaf or like the stalk and snap it if you don't have scissors, but you can grab the the plant without getting stung. You just, you have to avoid brushing it. Bam. You're now an official nettle picker. You know the secret. Wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Where did you learn how to pick nettles? Pornhub? What the hell guides are you watching? No, this is for real. I'm going to make it What's in My Garden Man episode just for you, John, and that's what it's going to be about is properly harvesting nettles. Actually, please do. Please, oh, please do do that. I'm sorry. I don't think I've ever done a nettle episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you got to get them before their knee height. If Once they're higher than knee height, they get bitter. This is again. This is uh, this is what the, I'm thank. This is why the show exists. Thank you, universe, for bestowing upon us such unbelievable intelligence. Um, it's high in vitamins A, B, C, and K. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jesse, look. Thank you so much for your time, man. So much love coming through the comments here. And uh, oh, right on. Oh my gosh! Nice what's to hear ha- your voice, buddy. What's happening to my stream right now? Has Facebook just given up on me? Uh, I think we're still on the stream here. Who knows, man? Technology's got its own mind. My gosh. Yeah, we're still live. 
Wow. My, well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been broadcasting live now for two hours and five minutes, and I think my laptop just took a 20-second time out and everything froze, but we are still live. Okay, wonderful. Um, Kevin says, last question, what if it got low knees? What if you've got low knees? How do you know how how high the nettles are before they've gone bad? Great question, uh, Kevin. I see. Okay. So, uh, about a foot and a half tall as two feet. Okay. You can you can take it after that. It's just not quite as good. And only harvest the top four to six leaves because if you go lower than that, you'll just kill the plant. Okay, good to know. Man, I should have saved this for an episode, but you guys know now. I'll just oh, do an episode. D- d- make the epi- <laughs> make the episode. There's 38 people watching right now, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We're not filling in the whole world, I guess. You can't not tell the rest of your following because you shared it here. That's ridiculous. This is not the exclusive <laughs> club of content. It's just a fart joke ridden bachelor pad situation. We see. Okay, how it goes. good to know. Yeah, I don't like to repeat myself. Well, you're all you're making a new journey, yeah. Well, <laughs> Jesse, thank you so much, man. I love you, and I really appreciate your time. And I cannot wait to come and catch up and send my <coughs> pardon me, send my regards to your send my regards to your parents. I love them to bits as well. They're wonderful. I will. Right on, John. Thanks for having me, man. All right. Well, I will speak to you soon. All right. Cheerio, boy. Cheerio. Ah. Uh, 